In this Revit tutorial, 3D detailing in Revit, we look at what to model, the benefits and challenges, and discuss alternatives. That's coming up straight after this. Welcome to Power Search, where I show you everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting today, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. On your screen, you can see the same detail presented in two forms. On the right, the more traditional 2D, and on the left, in complete 3D. Being Revit, these views are linked, as these are in the same model. As I select the bulkhead on the left, this is highlighted on the right. And likewise, if I select the framing element on the left, this is also highlighted on the right. The biggest question when it comes to 3D detailing is how much do I model? Well this depends on which method you use. In this video I will present you with two of the most common approaches. Let me know in the comments which of these you think is best. First off, complete 3D detailing. This should only be applied to the parts of the model that will be detailed in the construction drawings. For example, in this model I only need to detail the front left corner. By selecting an element in this area and then using a section box, I can start to eliminate the parts of the model that are not required. Use the blue grips to stretch and pull the box as needed. Here is an example of 3D detailing. The benefit here is the clarity as 3D reduces the risk of wrong interpretation. Furthermore, we can embellish the detail with colour and tag components with keynotes. Before tagging in 3D can be done, the view must first be locked. Toggle this padlock to lock the view. Now detail is not always a good thing. It takes time to achieve and because this is not a federated model, I had to model all of the framing which I otherwise might not do. For example, to recreate the ghosted framing elements, I first had to create a framing plan where I could lay out all of the framing members. I also had to ensure my model was set up well with things like levels. I needed a rough idea of what to model and for that I used a traditional 2D detail. And then import all of the required framing families. Out of the box Revit comes with a great library of framing families, such as these light gauge steel families, which were great for this project. These come with a type catalog, which allows us to select the specific size we need and only import that into the project. Now in this case, I even used slanted columns to create the brace. It's important to note this because it highlights one important factor. I would say this level of modeling should only be reserved for more experienced users because accuracy is paramount and so the technical demands are higher. But that doesn't mean it's the wrong approach. If all the families are available, then it's quite feasible. Take this window head section for example. This is generated from a profile family, which is then applied to a mullion family. An inexperienced user may not have the technical skill to do that. Tip 2. Manage unrequired content. This simply refers to turning off parts of the model that do not relate to the detail. In this sectional view, these joinery families are visible, but if I toggle the light bulb here on the view control bar, many more families appear, but in pink. This means these categories are hidden. To manage the process well, have predefined view templates in your project template. We'll get to that in a second. Right now, I want to show you this area enclosed by the callout. This is the part of the model the detail is taken from. And for the purposes of the detail, I don't need to see any of the pink families in that zone. So I have set up a sectional view template that turns these off in advance. When applied to a view, 
The view template overrides the model elements by hiding all of the deselected categories, saving a lot of time. Tip 3. Suppress complicated model display. Let's drill down to this connection detail. On the left, in the section view, the modelled slab stops short of the wall. On the right, in the detail view, the slab extends past the concrete block stack. To model the slab according to the detail would complicate the model unnecessarily. For a start, I would need to split the external wall in two as shown. Instead, I suggest using detail components to embellish the detail. And Revit has a great tool to help you keep track of the correspondence between 2D and 3D elements. Allow me to explain. On the detailed view, the 3D slab is not visible, even though the roof category is on. Over on the properties palette, find display model and toggle this to normal. Then back in the viz graphics, set details to half tone. And also apply a transparency. And now as I select the slab on the left, I can also see it highlighted on the right, ghosted in behind the detail 2D component. Tip 4, 2D components. Now, you are probably thinking 2D sounds a bit retro for Revit. So let's unpack this a little. 2D components, if made well, can be great time savers. Take this shopfront detail for example. Consider the time it would take to model these components in 3D. As I click on the 2D component, parameters are revealed. We have graphic controls for the seals and packing, as well as length controls. Now let's see how this was made. The first thing to notice is that this family is made up of various nested components, meaning that a pre-existing library of 2D component families is essential. These can be downloaded from various sites online. Next, as I open one of the nested families, notice the sections are drawn as masking regions. This helps to keep the detail clean by masking any unrequired lines. Most importantly, the family category is detail items. Revit out of the box comes with a series of pre-made 2D component families, which is a great starting point. These are divided into 15 divisions. Let's click into the door and windows folder, and then the folder at the top to get to the windows and doors. Let's open this first one to compare. The main difference is that the Autodesk versions are made with lines. And then back in a project, this is how you would use 2D components. From the project browser, find families and expand. From there, find detail items. Select the family and place over the model elements as required. Use rotate and align to position the family. Then, from the Annotation tab, find Keynotes and tag the element. That's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you learned something new and found that interesting. If you did, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. And I will see you in the next video.